I will now demonstrate how to create both simple and advanced data filters in a data synchronization task. All right, so first I'm going to show you a simple filter, filter in a task. And to start off, I have a task that I've run called instructor absurd accounts underscore db, and that is pulling from a SQL Server database table. And without any filters, I've pulled over 12 rows. And if we take a look at that table here, I've got my 12 rows, I'm going to set a simple filter or two simple filters to pull only records where the postal code starts with six and the account type is equal to partner. So that should pull over one record just to give you a simple demonstration. And I just navigated to the task wizard uh, from the activity log. You can also, of course, go back to task wizard's data synchronization. And so under my data filter step, I'm going to click new, select my object, and select that postal code. Starts with six. And I'll create another simple filter where the account type is equal to partner. All right, so those will be joined together with the AND operator. So I'm going to double check my field mapping and I'll go ahead and save and run this task. All right, so it successfully loaded one row as expected. Now I'm going to add an OR condition. So I'm going to say if the postal code starts with 6 or 9 and the account type equals partner, then load the data. So I'll go ahead and edit that same data synchronization task. And sometimes it's easiest to uh, just add all of your simple filters first and then edit once you convert the filter condition to an advanced filter condition. Because once you convert it to an advanced filter condition, you can't uh, go back. You would have to delete it and start over. Okay, so now I'll click Advanced. and just edit this a bit. And I'll add parentheses around my billing code, postal code conditions. And I'll click OK and run this again. And it processed three rows successfully as expected.